Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I'm back with another video. And in my last video, I talked about how in the Bitwig 3.3 beta, the wavetable oscillator has some aliasing issues with very audible aliasing, especially when you're listening to something in the higher frequencies. But they have completely fixed that issue. And now it has totally tolerable levels of aliasing, um, and they also added some new features. So I just want to do this um, amendment of my last video and show what they did and what it even could mean for uh, the future. So let's get into that. So here we have uh, the grid and we have the wavetable oscillator. I've loaded up a wavetable and let's just get right to it. Let's see what the scopes look like now. And here we go. Now, this here is aliasing, but look at where it's at. It is below negative 80 dB here, and that's not going to be audible. Um, now, if you're wondering what's the difference between aliasing and maybe some other artifacts, or how do we know that this isn't part of the sound itself, it's simply because if I do some pitch bending, we see that these frequencies start dancing all over the place like they're possessed and the fundamental and the harmonics move predictably. So any frequency that is moving the wrong direction or moving too fast upwards or downwards, that is aliasing and that should not be tolerated. Now, there was some talk and some comments about how, hey, people spend lots of money to get synthesizers that alias from the 90s or 80s and stuff like that and um i i don't think that's the case aliasing is super easy to get it is the normal natural way for a digital synthesizer or a generating of a digital signal to work it will naturally give you aliasing, you don't have to work for it. And if you have a nice pristine signal and you want it to alias, just add a bit, not a bit reducer, but like a, um, a down sampler or something like that and you'll get aliasing. It's super easy to do. There's no reason to spend a lot of money on old gear. Also though, if you're thinking about gear like um, SP12 or something like old drum machines or old samplers, those guys aren't really known for their aliasing. Um, they're known for having a sound that is associated with low bit rate sampling. So like um, you have a 12 bit sampler or an eight bit sampler and it has a certain noise to it. And that uh, is for, because of bit depth and not because of sample rate and frequencies going over Nyquist. Um, aliasing is, is specifically something that is of great concern, especially nowadays, with synthesis, and not so much with recording anymore, because they, they kind of solved that problem pretty early on by just simply um, putting a, a brick wall filter after right before Nyquist, and that pretty much eliminates the issue when you're recording. But when you're doing synthesis, it's a different story. So in any case, you don't really have to worry about uh, losing out on your sweet, sweet aliasing if that's what you're into. I'm super not into aliasing. I, I hate it. I don't even like it as an effect generally. So how did they do it? How did they get this aliasing gone as much as they did? Well, I think we get a clue perhaps, and I don't know. I'm just guessing here. But I saw an interview by the guy who made a Vital and he was talking about the problem of aliasing and how to get rid of it. And in this synthesizer, there is the uh, spectral morphing section here. Most wavetable synthesizers allow you to bend the waveform in different ways and to basically do wave shaping on the waveform. Um, but this particular synthesizer allows you to mess with the harmonic content of a specific waveform. And he was saying since uh, the waveforms are already being kind of split out into their uh, component harmonics, it wasn't much of a jump to cut off any frequency that would alias um, once it is uh, made into a digital stream. And so that's how 
they got rid of, or he got rid of aliasing in a synthesizer, and it is amazingly effective. And then when you look over here in Bitwig, we see that there are some new features that came along with this anti-aliasing, uh, which have to do with taking the spectrum and modifying the harmonics within uh, the overtones or the uh, harmonics of the, um, of the wavetable. So um, we can see here that, let me play a note here. Here we go. So this is the waveform as it strictly comes out of the wavetable in the original mode. When we go to diffuse mode, a different waveform and aligned, it's a different waveform. And basically what is happening there is these are, are basically three presets for what we have when we try to edit one of these wavetables. And you have this, which are the harmonics, and then this, which are the phases. So we're like basically aligning all the phases with the aligned, and then we're kind of randomizing the phases with the diffuse. Um, so at some level, they must be doing some of this math here. Uh, I'm not sure how much they're doing. Maybe they just did enough to get rid of a lot of the uh, aliasing. But in any case, it's super cool. Does that mean that in the future that they might uh, go deeper into this and allow us to do some of this same sort of spectral morphing type stuff or even an editor? Wow, that would be amazing. I don't know. But in any case... I think that's what they did. I think they dug somewhat into that realm, gave us much better anti-aliasing and also a few features that use um, this sort of overtones uh, or uh, harmonics sort of breaking out technology <laughs> and improve things. And by the way, yeah, get on this synth right away. This synthesizer is amazing these two different sort of morph modes add up to something amazing. And look at here, we got ourselves what can be considered a kind of like an MSEG. Wow, look at that, that's, I like that. Anyways, moving on. If you want me to do some material on Vital, I'm happy to do it, I'm kind of enamored with it. But one thing I just wanted to, to show, just because I'm I'm proud of what this guy Matt has done, um, is show what the scopes look like with this exact same wavetable in in Vital here. Let's look at it. Let's go over here. Okay, now we're gonna play it. Look at how clean that is, man. This is genius work here. This is like. This is amazing stuff. Uh, let me pitch bin it a bit and you can see. I get some little spikies there, but they remain well below 80. That is so clean and so beautiful. Uh, so whatever they're doing here with the spectrum stuff on in Vital uh, is really paying off. And um, that's at, uh, you know, just two times over sampling. So, wow impressed to say the least here um now when you come in and do some of the audio rate modulation or do some uh, fm stuff that you're allowed to do here you're going to run into some aliasing in vital um and i think that bitwig kind of handles that a bit better uh, bitwig they spent a lot of time making modulation uh, phrase modulation work well and i would use it over vital if i wanted to do some fm stuff However, in Vital, you can um, turn up the, the oversampling. And when you turn it all the way up to 8x, it's really, really clean, even when you're doing um, phase modulation, even pretty heavy phase modulation. So again, there's a lot of good stuff going on here, a lot to love about this synth, and it's free. So I think I'll leave a link in the description so that you can get up on this. Um, there's also some paid versions of it, and I recommend doing the paid version. The presets are really amazing. Um, anyway, though, this is really a video ab ab about 
what um, Bitwig did with the oscillator here. And I'm going to do a video probably pretty soon um, telling you how to use this oscillator within Bitwig. And there's so many cool things you can do with it. And also, I, I think I still might do a video about anti-aliasing and uh, what aliasing is because I hear some different misinformation about it out there. And um, I think it's interesting. I find it so fascinating because I think that aliasing is the main differentiator when people think that um, analog sounds better or cleaner or um, warmer, even in some cases. I think a lot of that comes from the distortion that comes from uh, aliasing. Um, so when you get rid of it, you you get... I would say maybe even the ideal sound. So uh, yeah, that might be worth it to you. In any case, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching my videos and um, have a wonderful day. Bye.